Okay, so today we are gonna replace the brake pads, rear brake pads. So first of all, you have to lift the car, the tire, remove the tire. Done. Ooh. The wrench is a 17 millimeter, 11 16, 5 lock nuts, and here we go. Let's go check the brakes to replace. So those brake pads are they have very little left you see you can still use it because it's still probably three millimeter a little bit more but I decided to remove it to do the job today because I have time so you're gonna have to remove these two bolts push it back and put a new one let's see how to do it really easy So we bought those TRW ZF group aftermarket. They look really nice and they also give you the four screws. And I think those are a real good quality. And they will probably last other 80,000 miles at least. At least. That's how it is when it's new. I ain't gonna measure right now. That's probably 50 millimeter. So you need a 11 16th thin and a 13 millimeter to be able to to remove those nuts, those bolts. because there is not much space here, you see. For example, now, you cannot go out from here. So, I'm going to tighten Cannot use a ratchet with a socket, there's no space. This is the 1116 I have, but it's very, very thin because it will not, will not go in. And this is the 13 millimeter I used inside. Okay, just remember one thing. I'm not gonna replace the rotor because I noticed that when you replace rotors on the Volkswagen, after two days, you have the same line already so this is pretty fine look those ones they are connected with the brake the rear stationary brake so of course if you pull this it's gonna tight the, the pads and you're not gonna remove it so that's why you have to make sure you have to make sure that before you do this job you don't have this tight you don't have this pulled because you have to release it because if you have that, that's it. Your pads, they're not gonna come out. And also, from here, just open the cap. See, for the reservoir, at least when you're gonna push it back, when you're gonna push the piston back, it's gonna breathe. You're gonna have actually to check that, but usually the fluid is not coming out, but just make sure that's open. Okay, so you don't need to put this anywhere because it's holded by the brake and by the line just make sure that you don't kink that but you see here are the two pads you can actually remove it by hand I just wanted to show you that the inside one you see that it's more I mean there is a little difference between the thickness of the pads I'm gonna show you later when they're out okay so here it is see this was the outside and this is the inside so the inside is still half of the life this is 
two millimeters is almost gone, but the other one is still good. So what I wanted to show you is this. If you try to push it, you see here it put this clamp and I was trying to push it in like you do in a regular in a regular in other type of brake pads uh, brake uh, pistons this one is not gonna go okay you really have to turn it clockwise so you need a few different tools that are available in the market to do that um, having one of those clamps for brake rotors and you can find it everywhere and I'm gonna do it with that right now you just have, always have to be careful that this gasket is the problem because this one it's not gonna rotate very well so you have to make sure you don't break it so what I'm gonna use is this tool I stick this in back and this is gonna push to the end and you're gonna rotate here and these two notches they're gonna go in the two notches that you see there and I'm gonna push it in easy so you have to lose it all the way retract it all the way to be able to go in let me show you on the on there so you see there what you have to do you have to go in and then makes two these two notches fit over there see now you're ready to go I think you have seen it now you're just gonna crank it and you're gonna push it back what I've told you is this gasket it's very tough to make it stay there so you're gonna have to lubricate it a little bit not to break it anyway at the end you're gonna make it go back uh, it's very it's just hard ideas little by little uh, has to be has to go back almost flush okay so you can see there I put a little bit of anti-size but the trick is that that gasket is gonna twist and the the way you have to use that tool is to rotate the piston but at the same time you have to tie it so you have to go clockwise with this and tie it counterclockwise with a wrench if not it's not going to push it it's very hard but working with the tool little by little is going to work uh, i believe you can see it from there but if I go in front, you probably don't see anything anymore. Mm -hmm. But that's what it is. Let me see. So, this one, tight. And then, you turn with this. And you see, it's gonna turn everything together. But at the end, when it's gonna be pushed, you're just gonna adjust the position of the of the gasket but then you have to remember you always have to tie it with this because if you don't tie it this side is not going to push because this is what it's going to push on it's going to pull this part against here so that's the only way you can push it in actually okay so you have to keep doing this until it's done okay see what you did I pushed all the way back it's very hard so it will take a while and then I twist it back I turn it back here counterclockwise this way to make sure the rubber you know it's straight and not wrinkled like it is when you turn clockwise so you have to turn it counterclockwise at the end it's not gonna move forward anymore it's just gonna make the the rubber the, the gasket even again that's very important if not the gasket is gonna get stuck in the pad and it's gonna crack and it's gonna break when you push it okay then you have to put the pads in you see that 
first you put the pads you push it in right here and the side and then you're gonna put you're gonna mount the caliper on it do not put the pads in the caliper because they're not gonna fit just do that and then make sure you can and if for example I did this on purpose you see that here it doesn't fit yet okay if you are in this situation you have to push the the piston back a little bit more just double check because pushing the piston is very hard so if you can avoid to do that twice it's better but it looks like in this case you know you're not gonna go in so we have to push it again a little bit so we're gonna do it again get into the clamp maybe a couple of millimeter in and we're gonna be good <coughs> okay you see it's done it's very hard but little by little you can do it and so now I just put you screw back there's two screws in the on the other side and actually on the TRW set they give you two new screws like this but I'm gonna still use the old one I just put a little bit of anti-seize and I'm good to go So one here, and always remember that you have to hold it with the screw, the wrench from the inside. So the outside is going to be 13, and this one inside is going to be 17. I got 11 16 because I didn't have 17 but that's what it is okay. 13 no, this is 16 13 it's a good one and that's it Drop down. Now we're gonna do the other side. Hopefully, it's a little easier. Than this, but basically, that's what it is. Then you put your tire back. You give a couple of pumps on the brakes, and you should be fine. What we did for the whole period was to double check the fluid here. You cannot really see the bottom because it's very low, but. You can see a little bit from here if you remove the battery cover but you can just see from the inside that the fluid is still there and they just put a rag because they don't want the fluid to, to avoid that the fluid it comes out when I push too much or I maybe I press the brake a little bit to release the pressure.